In this episode of Restore It, I'm not actually restoring anything. Instead, I've come down to see Toby at Rolling Rims in Essex to have the 1M's alloys professionally restored. Ever since I've owned this car, the front wheels have been a shade darker than the rears, which as you can imagine, bugs the hell out of me. I was told by the previous owner who saw the car on Instagram that his mate had repainted the fronts and had indeed gone a shade too dark. Because of this, I've always had it in the back of my mind that I'd get all four properly redone at some point. As you can see, there is quite a bit of damage, especially on the fronts. After driving E30s daily for about 6 years, swapping over to the 1M and these 19 inch rims with low profile tyres was never going to go smoothly. This isn't the only issue though. As you can see, the paint on the rears is also peeling off, because it turns out that all four of them have been repainted multiple times as we'll soon find out during this episode. Speaking of which, the guys at Rolling Rims took the wheels off and left the car on jack stands. I really think the stock wheels make the 1M look as good as it does, and with no wheels, it looks a bit boring especially next to this thing, which was in from Lamborghini, who work with rolling rims. Definitely a cool customer to have. And these guys work with quite a few high-end brands, and you'll see why once I give you the tour. Before I give you that tour, I just want to quickly thank the sponsor of this episode, eManual Online. What you're currently looking at is a factory-style workshop repair manual for older cars like the E30. This style of manual is the same type used by technicians at main dealerships when they need to carry out work on customers' cars. They contain step-by-step -step instructions with pictures and torque specs covering everything you need to know about a particular vehicle or range of vehicles. These manuals will show you how to do practically any job you can think of. They'll also inform you of any special tools or equipment that you might need to get the job done correctly. What's good about eManual Online is that they have a manual for pretty much every car in existence. So if you want to get stuck in but are lacking the confidence, click the link at the top of the description and see if they cover your car, truck or motorcycle. These things usually cost around 20 bucks but I'm going to leave a discount link down below that you can click to receive 30% off your entire order. They truly are invaluable pieces of information that will save you a ton of money and give you the knowledge and confidence to work on your pride and joy at home. I couldn't do half of what I do without them, so big thanks to eManual Online for sponsoring this episode and supporting Restore It. Let's get on with the tour. So, we start here in the tyre room. Equipped with tyre changes and wheel balancers, this is where each wheel starts and ends its journey. It's also where the steam machine and screw compressor are kept, both of which are piped all over the building. From there, we move to the chemical stripping room, which is equipped with six vats of acid, and also has a hot chemical jet washing station at the far end. Going back slightly, this is the old blasting cabinet, and this is the new one, located in what I'm calling the repair and prep room. In here are three booths for removing light damage and other things like adhesive from the old weights. Up next is a room I thankfully didn't need to visit on this occasion. This is again what I'm calling the more serious damage repair room. If a wheel is bent, cracked or seriously dented beyond simply grinding it down, it comes here to have new material welded in or can be heated up and straightened on the straightening machine. Moving on and going slightly off topic for this episode, this is the old diamond cutting lathe that takes half an hour to scan a wheel. And this is the new one. This bad boy can scan and cut wheels in a matter of minutes. I definitely want to come back with some deep dish BBSs in need of serious restoration to see this machine do its thing. Next up we have the powder coating setup which sits outside of the painting room. Black and grey primer sit on one side and have their own guns along with a box shaker to aerate the powder. On the other side of the painting room sits the clear coat setup which also has its own gun ready to go at all times. Now this room is definitely my favourite room here at Rolling Rims. You've got fresh air coming in from the ceiling, two waterfall extractor booths which I absolutely love, and one more normal air filter booth, opposite a human sized oven which sits at around 220 degrees celsius all day. I want to take this room with me. After painting, it's back in the tyre room to put the tyres back on and balance the newly painted wheels. So with the tour over, let's start the restoration by taking the tyres off. With that done, each wheel gets a numbered hook that securely attaches through the valve hole. This is so they don't lose track of which wheel is which, and due to the design of the hook, 
they don't swing around when they're getting transported from place to place. They then head into the stripping room and into the acid baths for around an hour and a half. It was during this process that we found out that all four wheels had high build primer on them, meaning they were repainted at some point. I think the fronts had three separate paint jobs on them in total. A large amount of paint came off them. Once they're stripped, they're let to drip dry and then it's onto the hot chemical jet wash booth. This will remove most of the acid, but not all of it. That's dealt with later on. So now the paint's gone and they're clean and dry, the next process is the damage repair. In this case, it's just a simple sand down on the edges to remove that curb rash and grinding the old adhesive off from where the old weights used to be. I do plan on coming back here in the future with some really rough wheels to see the other more serious repair tools at work. With the edges smooth and the inspections over, the next process is shot blasting with aluminium oxide to key the surface and remove any tiny imperfections left over. This recycling blasting cabinet can handle something like 68 CFM and is activated by a foot pedal. This is a dream blasting machine for me, although it was nice to hear that theirs gets blocked from time to time too. The results speak for themselves and only took minutes to achieve. The final steps before we leave this room is a good going over with a scotch bright to remove any trapped media that the air gun might miss. The wheels are now hung up onto a rack and the holes for the bolts are covered along with the back plate that contacts the hub. Toby was telling me that this is a slow day for them because I'm in filming, but they are still doing an impressive amount of wheels whilst letting me film mine. Before powder coating they need to be placed in the oven to gas off for about half an hour. This prevents the trapped acid gassing off later and ruining the new paint job. Once degassed and cooled down enough to paint, they were completely coated in grey primer, back to front. Once all four wheels are done, it's back into the oven for 20 minutes or so to cure the primer. The next coats are a water-based BMW Silver applied with a spray gun. It turns out that Hyper Silver can be done in more than one way. This method uses grey primer instead of black primer, and then two different base coats, one of which is just silver, and the second a nickel colour that is dusted on top to achieve varying levels of chroming, for lack of a better word.
Once the nickel coats were evenly applied across all four wheels, they were left to sit for a short period of time before receiving the final coats of lacquer done with powder. It goes on white and cures clear, just if you were wondering. Once they're all clear coated, they go back into the oven for a final time to completely cure. It's then back into the tyre room where they're left to cool down completely. Now I know they're just wheels, but I'm in love. They look absolutely brand new and they absolutely nailed the colour. Moving on to the final steps, the tyres are put back on with great care, balanced and new weights are added. And there we have it, all done in one day with ease. I'll show you them on the car shortly, but before I do, I just want to give a big thanks to Rolling Rims for having me for the day and letting me behind the scenes to see how they get things done to such a high level. Be it diamond cut or straight paint, these guys have it down to a T. Toby and the guys were telling me they do three to 400 wheels a week. I lost count of how many were getting done at the same time as mine. It really is a well-oiled machine, this place. They do three to 400 wheels a week, but actually have room for more. So if you're looking for a proper job from a trustworthy company, these are your guys. And here we are. I feel like it actually looks like a 1M now. The wheels really can let the whole car down. I'm super happy with the job and how this episode has turned out. It's a nice break and I think I'm going to try and do more of these types of videos. I truly am an amateur and visiting places like this really makes that clear to me. I've learned so much during the making of this episode, and I hope you did too whilst watching it. There's still a few things that this 1M needs, so I plan to have a few more episodes on it in the near future. Coming up next is more Mercedes episodes as we're nearing the end of that, and soon the 325i Sport will be back in the country and back on the channel with regular videos. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.